So reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 18, text 19. Jnanam karma cha karta cha trideva guna bhedataha prochyate guna shankhyane yatha vakshnutani api. According to the three different modes of material nature, there are three kinds of knowledge, action, and performer of action. Now hear of them from me. In the 14th chapter, the three divisions of the modes of material nature were elaborately described. In that chapter, it was said that the mode of goodness is illuminating, the mode of passion materialistic, and the mode of ignorance conducive to laziness and indolence. So there are three modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Now passion is always with a lot of activity. There are a lot of desires. It, it's uh, always, we can see, there's a lot of activity with someone who's in a mode of passion. Somebody who's in the mode of ignorance, they're gonna be um, lazy, indolent, you know, like sleep, Sleep also is in the mode of ignorance. And mode of goodness. Mode of goodness is they are always uh, pleasing, happy. They are they're clean, clean, and uh, not too many material desires. The, the main desire is just to have a, a happy, happy environment. All, these, all the modes of material nature are binding. They are not sources of liberation. Even in the mode of goodness, one is conditioned. So no matter which modes we are in, we are still in the material world. We are still thinking we are the body. We are still conditioned. The, the modes are compared to the ropes. They're guna. Guna means the chain. So the mode of ignorance is the hardest. It's like chain of thick, thick iron, which is binding us to this body. Then the mode of passion, is probably like a, a chain of, of gold, which is easier to break. And the mode of goodness is like a chain of uh, cotton thread, which is the easiest to break. So we are always advised to come at least to the mode of goodness, so, which can easily help us to raise to the liberated platform and uh, be situated in the truth. But it doesn't mean that if we are in the mode of goodness, or uh, if we are in the mode of passion and ignorance, we cannot hear and chant. We can, any position we are in, whatever position we are in, the minute we hear and chant about Krishna, we immediately rise above our modes. In the 17th chapter, the different types of worship by different types of men in different modes of material nature were described. In this verse, the Lord says that he wishes to speak about the different types of knowledge, workers, and work itself according to the three material modes. So text 20, Sarva Bhuteshu Yenaikam Bhavam Avyayam Ikshate Avibhaktam Vibhakteshu Tajyanam Vidhisatvikam that knowledge by which one undivided spiritual nature is seen in all living entities, though they are divided into innumerable forms, you should understand to be in the mode of goodness. A person who sees one spirit soul in every living being, whether a demigod, human being, animal, bird, beast, aquatic, or plant, possesses knowledge in the mode of goodness. So whoever... All living entities, no matter who we are, we are we an animal or a bird and aquatic, we are all souls, we are all parts and parcels of Krishna. So if one is able to see beyond the body, not that this is this body and that body, but someone who's able to see that these are all souls, then that knowledge is supposed to be in the mode of goodness. And then when, when it's said that one spirit soul, it doesn't mean that everybody's soul is one big blob. No, it means that we each are soul. We are all Satchidananda, but we are all individual. The souls are all individual souls. In all living entities, one spirit soul is there, although they have different bodies in terms of their previous work. Now, we, we all have our body based on our past karma. 
our past desires. That's why we have our body, different, different bodies. Maybe we were a dog or a monkey in our past life, you know. We don't know, but we have had all these animal bodies. We have had the bird bodies. We have had the tree bodies. Then only can one come to the point of having a human body. It's a cycle of 8,400,000 species of life. And there's a gradual elevation. So in this human form of life, we should act in such a way that we can stop this cycle of birth and death not come back again to the material world, engage in devotional service, hear and chant, so that we don't again have to take another body. And that's why we are, uh, we are strictly prohibited from engaging in sinful activities, because if we engage in sinful activities, our next body is going to be very, very low. It, it, can be, it will be mostly of an animal, you know, or a plant like that. As described in the seventh chapter, the manifestation of the living force in everybody is due to the superior nature of the Supreme Lord. Thus to see that one superior nature, that living force in everybody is to see in the mode of goodness. The living energy is imperishable, although the bodies are perishable. Differences are perceived in terms of the body because there are many forms of material existence in conditional life. The living force appears to be divided. Such impersonal knowledge is an aspect of self-realization. So if we are able to see that all these different bodies that a person has, that is just material nature. But inside each body, there is a soul, a soul that is Satchidananda. Then that is knowledge in the mode of goodness. Text 21. Prathakvena tu yajnanam nana bhavan prathakvidan veti sarveshu bhuteshu tajnanam vidirajasam. The knowledge by which one sees that in every different body there is a different type of living entity, you should understand to be in the mode of passion. The concept that the material body is the living entity and that with the destruction of the body, the consciousness is also destroyed, is called in the mode of passion. According to that knowledge, bodies differ from one another because the development of different types of consciousness. Otherwise, there is no separate soul which manifests consciousness. So if we, if we think that I am this body, and so I'm different, and then, uh, any other living entity, say a dog, a tree, is the, that the tree is not a soul who is in the body of a tree, but the tree, that is his body. There is no soul inside. And once that tree dies, then the consciousness of the tree is finished. This kind of knowledge is called knowledge in the mode of passion. The body is itself the soul, and there is no separate soul beyond the body. According to such knowledge, consciousness is temporary, or else there are no individual souls, but there is an all-pervading soul, which is full of knowledge. And this body is a manifestation of temporary ignorance. So in the mode of passion, there are two kinds of thinking. One, that there is no soul, that each, each everyone, as soon as they leave the body, they are going to die. There's no more existence for that person. And then, uh, or they think that there is one big soul. Everyone, and that, that one big soul, what happens is that soul has now taken up its, this body, which is of ignorance. And when the body is finished, then the soul is going to go and mix up again with this one soul. This is also in the knowledge. Uh, this knowledge is also in the mode of passion because it's not correct knowledge. We are not one soul. We are all individual souls. We are all different individual souls. And Krishna, he's the super soul. He can never come under ignorance. Or beyond this body, there is no special individual or supreme soul. All such conceptions are considered products of the mode of passion. So if somebody who does not believe 
that the Paramatma is different than the Atma, that knowledge is in the mode of passion. Is that okay? Any questions, comments? All okay? No clear, yeah, it's clear. Yeah, okay. So, should we stop here? Because again, there is another in the mode of darkness. Are okay. You, yeah, let's stop. Yes, we can stop here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for joining yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sita ki jeshla Have a great day.